In this tutorial, we'll teach you how to create customizable 3D characters like in your favorite RPGs. This is just as shockingly simple as it is shockingly tedious. For this tutorial, we're going to need to start in Blender. Full disclosure, I accidentally destroyed my PC trying to do a high resolution model. So instead for this tutorial, we'll be using this little guy that I made right here. If you want to use the character that I made, I'll leave a link in the description. The character that I created was Adobe Fuse. So you don't need to credit anybody there, but all the armor and pieces that go into it, for the most part, require crediting the authors. I'll leave notes in the download so you don't get sued. Anyway, back to the derpy character that I made, which I don't know why you'd want that too, but it's in the download. And the first thing that you're gonna wanna do after you've created your character is just make sure it's centered with its X, Y, and Z scale set to one. Once it's in the center of your scene, you can do that by hitting Control A and then hitting All Transforms. Anyway, the first thing that we're gonna do is create some clothes for our character. This isn't a Blender tutorial, so I'm not going to show you how to make this, but there's plenty of other tutorials out there. Or another thing that you could do is go onto sketchfab.com, type in what you're looking for. In this case, I'll do something like armor, hit enter, and then go down to licensing, and then click CCBY, CCBY-SA, and then CCBY-ND, and finally CCO. All of these are available for commercial use and are free, but most of them will require you to give credit to the author, which isn't really a big deal. You also have these categories here. So if you're looking for characters, you can go ahead and click on characters. And then if you're looking for armor, it tends to be under fashion and style, but I would also use all categories. Now, the thing to be careful about, which is where I messed up, is to check the triangle count of your models. I cannot stress this enough. 3D modelers are artists first and game developers second. Most of these free ones and even some of the paid ones will be in the hundreds of thousands of triangles, which will break your computer if you try to work with them in this way, because remember, you're going to be using more than one of these. For a high definition character, all of the triangles put together that you see, you want there to be at max 60,000 in most cases. And another thing about these assets, especially the free ones, is they tend to be in a million different pieces and you're gonna wanna put them all into one and fix the textures, which by the way, in order to combine several different meshes, you need to hit Control J after you've selected them. And pretty much, if you wanna have customizable characters, and not use the assets that we're gonna provide in the description, then you're gonna to have to learn Blender. Okay, now that we got our armor pieces, I have two. We're gonna go down to this little green triangle thing, and we're gonna hit the plus button next to shape keys. This will give us our basis, and we're gonna hit the plus button again, and then we're gonna name this nose one. The basis will be our default, and the nose one will be a customizable option. We're gonna change its value to one, and then we're just gonna sculpt in our nose. Now, another fair warning is that once you start using shape keys, you will not be able to add modifiers onto your mesh. There are ways around this, but for the most part, just make sure you get all the modifiers that you want beforehand. All right, now that we have our nose one shape key, we're gonna go ahead and make nose two. Set nose one's value to zero, and then set nose two's value to one. Sculpt it out, and then we're gonna create two more examples of shape keys for two different ear types. Now for this tutorial, it's important that every body part modification has a name that includes the part of the body that it's modifying. For instance, in our example, we have nose one, nose two, and then ear one, and then ear two. We'll be using the shape key names later when we get into Unity. Now the next pieces that we're gonna make is the hair. The reason that we saved this for last is because it can be directly affected by the shape keys. Now we're gonna max out all of our shape keys to make sure that the hair doesn't clip through anything we don't want it to as much as possible. Now you're going to want to make sure that this clipping doesn't happen on almost any of the objects that you create, specifically ones where you won't be able to turn off the material for different body parts, which we'll get into in just a second. Now I'm going to go ahead and create two different hairstyles, and obviously I'm not putting a lot of effort into these. Now the next thing that we're going to do is get into materials and textures. So on the character, go ahead and click on the materials tab. Now we could just change the skin tone right here, but we're going to want to be able to do that in Unity at runtime. And we're going to want duplicates of the same exact material for each body part that might be completely covered up by an armor or clothing piece. So let's go ahead and make those two materials. Because in our simple example, that's just the person and his torso. Now let's go ahead and assign the torso material to specifically the torso. We'll turn off our armor, and then we'll click all the faces that we need to, which will be easier if you turn off the shader view by clicking this full circle right here. Once you're done, on the materials tab, click skin tone torso, or whatever you named it to, and then hit assign with those faces still selected. Now with the shader tab back on, you can see that despite being a part of the same mesh, it has a different material. This means that when you have specific armors turned on, you can turn this material off to avoid clipping. Now the last thing that you'll need for setup is the actual textures. This is because when we go into Unity, we'll be changing skin tones by just changing the underlying color. Now the next thing that we're going to do is give this guy a texture. The first thing that we're going to do is select every single face on our character mesh. There is a shortcut to do this, but I'm lazy, so I just click this little thing here and select everything like this. Once you've done that, you're going to right click the screen, go to UV Unwrap and Smart Unwrap, and just hit OK. Next, we're going to go into UV Editing. We're going to click this little new button right here. 
I'm gonna name it character skin and you can increase the resolution if you want to. Now going into the shader tab, we're gonna click this little add button and we're gonna look for an image texture connected to base color. And then we're gonna select our image texture and now it should be ready to go. You're gonna to wanna to do that for both materials. Now it's time to head into texture paint. Now for the base texture, you're gonna want it to be chalk white, which you can do with a paint bucket tool. Now you can go ahead and design your texture. Probably be better to use something like GIMP or Photoshop and then unwrap a skin texture. I'll leave better tutorials for that in the description. But for this example, I'm just gonna draw a smiley face and maybe some abs. Don't be scared, he can't hurt you. Now we're gonna export this as an FBX file. So that you're aware, just because a mesh is turned off or you can't see it, doesn't mean that it won't be exported as well. In fact, everything in your project will be exported with the file. So make sure you only have what you want. Anyway, after you've double checked your transforms, go to File, Export, FBX, and when this window pops up, we'll go ahead and change the name of our file. And then we're gonna tick the apply transform box. And now it's time to go to mixamo.com. It is free, so you don't have to worry about that. And once you've logged in, we're gonna click upload character. Select the file, adjust it as needs be, hit next, set up these little circle thingies following the instructions. It's really not that hard. Then hit next again, wait a little bit. Then bam, we have a character that we can work with. And you'll see that the shoulder is clipping, which is why it has a separate material. So when you make your character, or if you download R1, just as a reminder, make sure that you assign each of the faces that would be covered up by any of your armor types to its own material. So torso, head, arms, legs, feet, hands, stuff like that. Then go ahead and hit next. We're gonna find an animation. I'm just gonna pull up this idle one right here. Hit download, select FBX for Unity, and then click download again. Great, now we can finally get into Unity. I've already gone ahead and put the character into a prefab folder. Just to make sure our animation is working as expected, let's go ahead and click on the prefab and then go to rig and set it to humanoid. And finally, I'm gonna go ahead and extract the materials. Duplicate the animation that we downloaded. Now let's go ahead and make a new folder, call it animations, create a new animation controller, call it character, and put it on our character in the scene. With that done, go ahead and open up our animator window with our character selected and drag and drop in our duplicated idle animation. And also we're gonna put our idle animation into the animations folder. Then we're just gonna adjust our character a little bit. And finally, we'll go to our idle animation and then we're gonna turn on loop time. Entering into play mode, you'll see that it works. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is quickly set up some UI that we're gonna be using later. This isn't a tutorial for UI, so I'll let you figure this part out on your own. That being said, once it is done, I have buttons to adjust the skin tone, the hair, the nose, the ears, and the armor. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is create a new script and we're gonna call it Customize Character. And we'll get into the rest of this stuff in our next video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.